Hi guys, welcome back to Creative Frenzy. I am in the midst of making a miniature telephone for my dollhouse, but hmm, um, I've only gotten so far. However, I thought I'd show you some of the process and uh, take you along with me. Oops, sorry about that. Um, I'll give you a better view here. <laughs> Alrighty, so uh, you may have noticed from the last few, sorry about that again, uh, the last few videos I've been using these little miniature blocks that I got from the dollar store. I got mine on Dollar Tree. I'm sure you can get them at other craft stores and things like that. So look around, see what you can find. Um, so I always start with the basics, the wood block, and I did cut off the part on this side. So there is a long grain that goes this way. There we go. Okay. And then this is the short grain here. So what you do is you cut off with the grain, right? Just be careful. Make sure your blade is sharp. Hold your finger up top so you don't cut yourself. Just like that. And then you just go as far as you like, depending on what you're making. Since I'm making a telephone, I go quite a bit. And then I have to do less sanding. So what I want to do is I want to create a lesser edge here. And then... There. And then you can sand it. But see how it's a bit more curved? So and then you can sand it and then you have this really cool um, sloped edge. <laughs> and then... If you want the um, the phone part, the uh, the hand rest or whatever, this part here, if you want it to be raised up, you can put a hole in it, or you can just do a divot like I did here. I might do this one with just the plain divot. It is a little crooked. I could straighten that up a bit. Again, remember what I said before about you know trimming. You have to be careful because it can get out of hand very quickly. And sometimes if you're very careful, you can do it this way. My blade is not overly sharp, so it'll be okay. Because I've been using it for different projects. There we go. So as you can see in the profile here, there's a bit more of a curve to it. But the top, you can put a hole in it, <clears throat> excuse me, to put another piece in there so it raises up the handset of the telephone. It depends on you. But what I did, um, I did do a groove in, in this one. I might make it a little bit deeper. If I had a bigger file, it probably would work better. I don't think I have one. Not a Oh, I do. Hold on. I do have a bunch of wood files. Do I have a round one here? That's a round one. So this is my jewelry one. It's probably not the best thing to use. But if you have a wood file, it's just a question of patience, right? But then you can just do the groove. And then you have a place to put your uh, telephone a handset. If you have a rougher file, it probably would work better. But as you can see, it just takes a bit of patience. And you can really make the groove as deep as you like. Um, if you want it to uh, have more of a, you know, stay in place kind of thing without it having, uh, being removable, you could obviously just glue it in place. And then you don't have to worry about it. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I rounded off all my corners, sanded it, everything. Um, if you just leave your pieces of sandpaper, on, you could glue this down or use some um, tape or whatever, just so it doesn't irritate you when it moves on you. Um, 
because I don't really want to file my nails at the same time. So just rounding everything off nicely makes it easier to paint later and have a smoother finish. So this one, what I did is, well, it's pretty similar. It's not bad. Um, I just did some acrylic paint first and then I went over top with nail polish. I just get the cheapy ones at the dollar store, where else? But I have a lot of nail polishes that I don't use on a regular basis, so it's kind of nice to be able to use them for these little projects. What I like about it, it gives this shiny finish, so it almost looks like it's a, a plastic, which is what, or big light or something like that. So a lot of phones were not wood, so it's kind of nice to be able to, you know, play with it and see what you can come up with. Okay, so I buy inexpensive wire. Copper is your best bet because it's nice and easy to work with. I just buy a big roll of it. I think I got this at my dollar store, actually. Um, I've had this one for a few years already. I make jewelry with it. I do just about everything with this, but I love it because it's nice and thin, easy to work with. You can make jump rings easily. Any mandrel will do. And then you can create all kinds of things with it. So I am going to cut a piece of this. Where are my cutters? There they are. <laughs> just cut a few inches. It's not a precise measurement because it all depends on how big your block is. But anyway, um, I have been using so this style of bead here. If you don't have that, you could just use plain wire. It's entirely up to you. You don't have to put that on there. But I thought it'd be kind of cute to have that on there. So I'm going to have... Um, a centerpiece because I did drill a hole and I'm going to have that on there. I'm going to have to move my things out a bit just so I can get that on there or it needs to be taller one or the other. I will figure that out. I'm not going to worry about it just yet. I'm just going to show you some more processes of how I did it and then you can go from there. So it all depends on what kind of bead you have. You don't even have to use a bead if you don't want to. But they have some really cute beads. You know, there's blue, there's green. You can make these in all different kinds of color. If you have a wooden bead, you could just paint it. It's entirely up to you. They can make it the same color as your nail polish or whatever. You can skip this all together and just do it this way. But I kind of like having that extra little bit. So that's kind of cool. So that when you put it on there, it has a bit of a uh, weight to it. You see what I mean? And if you don't like the color and that's the only color you have, paint over it. It's fine. Not a big deal. And you can paint the wire too. It doesn't have to be uh, the wire color. So what you're going to do is you are going to make it so that it goes over the sides, right? There we go. Make it a little bit bigger than you think, because I didn't do that there. So I'm going to have to make this part on here a little bit higher. But there we have that. And then what I've been using is uh, earring backings. You can get these off of um, jewelry you find at Goodwill or something like that. It's entirely up to you. You can buy them very easily on um, Etsy, and not Etsy, but don't forget they come in different shapes. So if you buy, you know, all of one kind, that's great. If you have a bunch of disparaging looks, <laughs> that's okay too. You know, you can play with it and see which ones you like. Some are fancier than others. You could use the um, the bronze color, you could use the silver. Again, you can paint them. But yeah, um, I also get these off of my old jewelry that I don't use because I like to use a lot of the times the rubber backing because it has less irritation on my earlobes for some odd reason. The older I get, the more irritated my skin gets, so it's kind of nice to be able to have options. So I use them for this instead. And then you just feed them on there. This might be a little bit on the long side. I'll just trim that. 
So all you're doing, and this wire is actually pretty good because it's not too thick. It'll hold this kind of um, earring backing quite easily. These little um, I want to say beads, but they are. They're polymer clay beads. I got them at Dollar Tree. You can get them in different colors, but I thought they would be really good to have on here. You just glue them on kind of thing. Again, you can paint this. You don't have to worry about the colors if you're not uh, matchy-matchy kind of thing. Same as here. Oh, that one's completely different. Again, if you're going to paint it, it doesn't matter. So... trim that and make it a little bit easier to put it on there. That's why you always leave it a little bit longer because you can always trim it afterwards. There we go. And then just use your little foam. <laughs> it can be a little bit finicky. All right, so that is way too long. That is okay because we can always come back and fix that. That's why you leave it long, right? I'm kind of happy with that. As you can tell, I don't really measure. That's probably not a good thing. But I don't think it's a bad thing either. But there we go. So now that'll fit on there more or less. Okay? So that's basically the basis of that. And then you can glue these on there. And then you have this. But this is not going to fit quite on there. So I'm going to need to add something to it. So what I could do is I could do this. And make it the same as that kind of thing. You know what I mean? That needs to be a bit taller. Okay. We'll do that. Head pins always come in handy. Leave it always a little bit longer than you think. Because it just holds everything together nicely. And for some reason I want a green telephone, so... You would glue that into place. Now, I'm going to drill this a little bit deeper. Even though I've painted it. And some of you have asked where I get my little push hand drill. You can get these on Amazon. You can get them at Walmart. I got mine at Princess Auto um, a few years back, actually. Quite a few years. Mine came with some drill bits. Some of them come without. But you need to make sure you get some that will actually fit inside your, um, inside your chuck. Okay. So, and if you get the one that is the plunger, the, you know, the twist one, it's easier to use. So I recommend that you do get the twist one. I do have, give me one second. It can get a little tricky sometimes. I do have this one. I got this set off of... Um, AliExpress. Now, this is not a plunger one like this one, okay? So, you have to twist. So, if you have arthritis in your wrists or in your fingers, this will be a bit more difficult to use. But I like it because it's got a larger drill bit. And if I don't want to get my Dremel out, this is a good alternative. So, if you, you know, it, it depends on what you need it for. I will try and leave a link in one of the description boxes or maybe on my um, uh, homepage so that you can find out for yourself where to get it. Like I said, I've seen it at Walmart, on Amazon. You can get it on AliExpress. I'm sure Timu has it also. And they're varying prices. The one I found the cheapest was at Walmart. It was actually a pretty good deal. So just to give you a heads up, because I've had some questions. All right. So now you know. So we're going to glue this into place. So all I do is I just go like that, make sure I get it more or less covered. You can 
almost clean the glue off. Now you can get as fancy with this as you like. It's entirely up to you. But you know what? I think I'm going to put some glue onto here too. As long as it dries clear, it's not going to matter. I'll probably end up um, putting a larger piece up there. I'm not entirely sure because balancing that on there is going to be pretty tricky. But you can see now that's looking more like a phone. And you know what? There are some weird phones out there, so it does not matter what yours looks like in the end. I mean, they have football phones, banana phones, you name it. So if yours looks a little bit awkward, it's okay. It's not the end of the world. <laughs> I'm just saying. Okay, so the face of this is fairly small. So what I'm doing is I'm going to make my rotary part. You could do... Um, you know, the push button ones, it's entirely up to you, but I'm doing rotary because it just, I don't know, for funsies. Uh, mine does not have the correct amount of holes. Am I going to worry about it? Nope, I'm not. So, you know, it's one of those things. You don't always need to worry about every single detail. So I'm going to be gluing a bunch of things on there. So I'm going to make sure I have enough on there. I did flatten mine a little bit with my hammer, so I'm just going to glue that there. And then I want a center ring because I want to raise up my dial part. So I'm just going to go like that. And then I can put this, hang on, make sure I get that right. In the center all right does that make sense if you really want to you can just put another one in the center there because it'll just help raise it and support the dial part you could use a, a glazing glue or whatever if you wanted to like a, a glitter glue or dimensional glue if you wanted to cover that up but I kind of like that and then I need my little piece on the end there. I do have some leftover bits. I was going to try a brad, but it didn't, it was just a bit too big. I mean, I could still use it if I wanted to. But oh, I need tweezers. I do have them. Oh, come on, there we go. We can clean some of that glue off afterwards. It's always a little bit finicky, isn't it? I don't know if I want to trim some of that. But there we go. That's part of it. And then we can just sort of, if you really wanted to, you can line that up with this and then it will hide it. But And then I will see if I like this on there. So you could, but it's a bit too big. I don't know. I will see if I can find something else. Okay, so I decided to do it this way anyway. And uh, it doesn't look too bad. Sorry, <laughs> I was way off uh, base there. Okay, so I did do a hole in the back for my phone cord. All I did was grab some crochet thread. This is very easy. And... Uh, I've used this for a few different projects um, in the past, but all you're doing is you're going to stiffen up your um, cotton thread. You could use embroidery floss if that's what you want it, like if you wanted to do a different color. I'm just using some plain cotton. But whatever you have on hand will work. All you're going to do is coat that with glue. And yeah, it's a bit sticky mess. That's okay. And clean that off. And then you just grab something to wrap it around. So you could use a um, darning needle or something like that. 
but you're going to leave some there and then you're going to just wrap it around to make your cord and then you leave it sort of like that for a little bit not much but a little bit just to let it set and then you can once the glue has dried a little bit then you can take it off so we'll set that aside for now And that'd be good to go. There. I'll just leave that there so you can see it. Okay, so now I've got my cord. It's a little bit on the long side, so I'm going to trim it. And I'm going to trim it on an angle so I can feed it through my bead a little bit easier. And here's the tricky part. Getting that in there. But because it's should have enough space. Come on. And the glue has made it stiff, so it should fit nicely in there. All right. So there's our cord. Easy peasy. I'm just going to make that a little bit more blending in with the rest of it. And then here, you could glue that in if you wanted to, and then you can glue that on top of there. Sorry about that. So you can glue that in, and then you can glue that on top of there, or you could leave it so that you can remove it. It is entirely up to you. If you find that this doesn't work, you could use a uh, part of a straw, which I think, you know, you use the scoopy part, <laughs> the rounded part, and put it on there, and then you have a cradle for your uh, headpiece. But there we go. Yeah, something from a simple block. Again, you know, it's going to take a little bit of time, before, but as you can see, the cord is working quite nicely. So there. There's the telephone. It's cute, right? I thought so. There we go. Again, you know, this one should be almost set. And then all you're doing, hang on, is pulling it off. And there you have your little telephone cord. Let it dry completely and it'll keep its form. You don't have to use wire because wire can be sometimes a little bit difficult to work with. It, I tried wire. It, Yeah, we'll just ignore that. <laughs> all right. So there is the little telephone. It's very cute. It's very in keeping with um, my style. <laughs> Again, you can glue that down if you like, or you can leave it. It's entirely up to you. Uh -huh. You can shorten it. You can make it a little bit longer, whatever you feel like doing. You can make a wall version of this. I think that would be kind of cute, actually. You know, make a phone any which way you like, whatever works for you. So I hope you enjoyed that. Again, I will try and leave. Um, I have to learn how to do this, people. I'm not very technically inclined. Some of you asked me to link stuff, so I will try my best, okay? Just give me some time to work on that. I'm not very tech savvy. So anyway, I will leave links to what I can, and uh, I will see you in the next video. Bye, guys.